The use of personal fall arrest systems is one of the most common methods used to protect workers from falls. Within those systems, there are various options to choose from to protect those who are exposed. Your selection will be based on the type of work being done, the location of the fall hazard, the worker, the fall distance, and other factors. Whatever system you choose, be sure to keep in mind the fall clearance distance. Calculating fall clearance distances ensures that the system being used will not allow a worker to contact any lower level in case of a fall. However, the calculation will be different if using a self-retracting lifeline, as opposed to using a shock absorbing lanyard. Hi, I'm Sergio with a and Safety, and in this video, we will go over how to correctly calculate your required fall clearance distance, specifically for self-retracting lifelines, or SRLs for short. One of the biggest differences when it comes to calculating required fall clearance distance for an SRL rather than a lanyard is where you measure from. For lanyards, we measure from the anchor point to the next lower level or ground. If you wanna learn more about that, be sure to check out our video on that as well. Anyways, for SRLs, we don't measure from the anchor. Instead, we measure from the working surface in which the worker is standing and working from. So it doesn't matter if the anchor point is at shoulder height or four feet above the head. We're gonna measure from the working surface to that lower level or ground. Why? Well, it's simply because the fall arrest system begins to activate as soon as a fall is detected, unlike a harness, which will extend fully during a fall. Great, now we understand where we measure from. Now we must understand our systems. There are two classes of SRLs. We have a class A and a class B. It is crucial we know what class SRL we are using before we calculate fall clearance distance. The two classes have different total fall distances, which will obviously affect how far you fall before being arrested. Class A's have a total fall distance of two feet, while the total fall distance for a class B SRL is four and a half feet. Now that we understand how these two systems differ, let's calculate the required fall distance clearance for each class. Once we understand the SRL class, the calculation is simple. Let's start with the class A SRL. We start with the total fall distance for that SRL, which for a class A would be two feet. Then we add one foot for harness stretch and a safety factor one foot. Once we add all these values, we see that the working surface must be at least four feet above the next lower level or ground. Now let's do this all over, but this time for a class B SRL. Once again, we start with the total fall distance for that SRL, which for a class B would be four and a half feet. Then we add one foot for harness stretch, and then a safety factor of one and a half feet since there is a longer fall distance. Once these values are added, we see that the working surface must be at least seven feet above the next lower level or ground. Pretty simple, right? That is, until the worker moves. The calculations we just went over only work if the worker is standing directly underneath that anchor point or directly next to an anchor point at shoulder height. The calculations will look a little bit different when a worker is bending over or kneeling to perform the task or if the worker needs to walk away from the anchor point, extending that SRL behind him. Let's go over each scenario. If a worker must bend over or kneel at any point to perform the task or job, we must add three feet to our original calculation. Those three feet account for the extension of their body when they fall. So for class A SRLs, we add three feet to the original four feet clearance distance, making the required fall clearance distance seven feet for this scenario. Now we do the same thing for the class B SRL. We add three feet to the original seven feet clearance distance to get a new required fall clearance distance of 10 feet. Be sure to add those three feet if the worker must bend over or kneel at any time during that job task. Another worker action that would require additional calculations is walking away from the anchor horizontally. When the worker walks away from the overhead anchorage or shoulder height anchorage, they are extending that lifeline, creating not only a swing fall hazard, but also a longer fall. So in these situations, we use the same original calculation from earlier, but now we must add one foot for every two feet of offset from that anchorage point. So. If you're working six feet from the anchorage point, we must add three feet to the original fall clearance distance. Now keep in mind, there are tasks where the worker is required to work away from the anchorage point and kneeling or crouching, and we must account for both of those variables. Let's run through some more complex examples to test you and ensure you're understanding this concept. For this scenario, let's say we're using a class A SRL. The worker must bend over during the task and they must work four feet from the anchorage overhead. Feel free to pause the video and try to work this problem out. Did you get nine feet? Yeah. Let's work through it together. We start with the total fall distance for a class A SRL, which is two feet. Then add one foot for harness stretch and one foot for safety factor. Now we must also add three feet because the worker is bent over and add another two feet since the worker will be four feet from the anchorage. Once we add all that up, 
we see that we must have a fall clearance distance of nine feet from the working surface to the next lower level or ground to use this system. I hope this video and going over these different scenarios with the different classes of SRLs have helped you with understanding how to calculate fall clearance distance and how not all personal fall arrest systems can be used in the same scenario. Before signing or using your next personal fall arrest system, be sure to calculate your fall clearance distance to ensure that you or your coworker does not contact the lower level should a fall occur. Be sure to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed the content and subscribe so you don't miss out on any more videos like this. Feel free to contact us using the information provided below if you have any questions or need assistance with your fall protection program or your safety program as a whole. You can also follow us on all social media platforms to stay updated with our latest safety tips and tricks. And as always, until next time, be safe and thank you.